Turner. I I'm sure you know where everything else is. I'm not. You've been busy, I see. Oh, well, yes, yes, I have done a bit of decluttering. Uh, I've always been a minimalist at heart. <laughs> I'd have loved to get my hands on her knickknacks. <laughs> this clutter, where is it? Oh, no, it's all safely boxed up, don't worry. But but if, if you don't need it, perhaps Emily could have it for her charity shop. <laughs> Excuse me, my guests are waiting. <laughs> Oh, I love Engelbert Umperdink. Three bars of the last waltz and I'm putty in his hands. Wait till he gets round to please release me. We'll be all joining in. It's not that bad, Mother, will you? Stop complaining. Or oh, breathing. Whichever's easier. <laughs> what can I get you to drink? I can offer you a full range of intoxicating beverages and conversation. <laughs> a glass of red wine, please. Scotch and thread. Coming up. You see? Cold hospitality. Haven't you two have forgotten what it means? Make it a treble, Norris. Treble? Bah, yeck. Talk about moats and beams, eh, Emily? Oh, well, I wouldn't like to. Well, of course she wouldn't. I mean, she's here to enjoy herself, not to listen to you. Look, why don't you have a sausage on a stick and feel free to leave the sausage? Yeah, this does make a nice change, doesn't it? <laughs> you know, good wine, good food. <laughs> Good company. <laughs> what, 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 what do you think to the food? Well, we just said that, that you made the canopies yourself. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Mother! Men's fingers. I don't think much of your sausage. Fred? He asked! Yes, well, th those were a bit last minute, I must admit. I, I was trying to cater for the less sophisticated palate. There's no wrong with my palate. I said, there's no wrong with my palate. I'm the finest judge of meat this side of Pennines. He knows his mutton, that's for sure. Do you mind? I heard that. Ken, uh, uh, Ken, I, I, I hear there's a check-off uh, on, on at the Playhouse. Uh, no, that finished last week. It's seven brides for seven brothers now. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I suppose you have to cater for the more popular taste. Well, it's hardly that. The brothers outnumbered the audience when I reviewed it. <laughs> Norris, um, we... I think we really must be going. Huh? Really? But... I'm oh, sorry, it's 20 past. Yeah, but it, it's Eccles. We, uh, we can't leave her for long. She'll pine. Oh, fine, fine, then. I'll, I'll, I'll just get your coats. We must be making tracks and all. If anybody wants to join us at the Rovers. Oh, that's right. Rub me nose in it, why don't you? You're welcome at any time. You have a funny notion of welcome is all I can say. We're very sorry if we offended you, Blanche, and we'd be grateful if you'd join us for drinks. On us. You've more chance of King Kong walking into that pub than me. That need frighten off fewer punters. Hmm. What have you got there? My clutter. I found it under the sink. Hello, Blanche. Large gin and tonic, please. Oh, it's good to see you again. I knew it wouldn't be long before you came back. Never let it be said that I'm one to bear a grudge. Oh, it won't be said. Not in this place, not while I'm in charge. Thank you, Shelley. It's hard to swallow your pride like this, but it'll be worth it if we can draw a line under the whole sorry affair once and for all. I couldn't agree more. You're doing the right thing. I'm not doing anything. Oh, don't be so modest, Blanche. I know what a proud woman you are. I am. And I tell you what, just to show you how much I appreciate your custom, you can have that on the house. I only ordered it on the understanding that it was on the house. Well, it is now. It was when I ordered it, or I wouldn't have ordered it. If I'd known you were making that assumption, I wouldn't have poured it. Well, in that case... Oh, well... Never mind, as long as you're giving up your silly boycott. I haven't given it up. Well, what's that then? Me free drink. The drink with which you're accepting defeat and apologising for my distress. I am accepting nothing of the no, sort. Hang on, hang on, there's a misunderstanding here. I saw Blanche last night and I, I told her we were sorry if we'd offended her and said she could have a drink on us. Did you now? Well, me and Fred. I just forgot to tell you, sorry. Hello. Cheers. I, I leave. Well, hang on a minute. The customer, it's worth a free drink to get her back in the fold. I'm not disputing that. I would have just liked to make the decision myself, or at least been consulted. When you two have finished gassing, 
I'd like two large gin and tonics, please. One for me, one for Rita. She'll be here in a minute, will she? She will. Whatever you say, Blanche. Are you doubting my word again? As long as you pay for him, I don't care who drinks him. Any sign? No, I told you I'd let you know if he came in. Danny, I'm sick of this. Did you even care all this morning? No, I didn't get a chance. Oh. OK. Everything all right? Yeah, tickety boo, thanks, Rita. Oh. oh, look, Rita. That's one in the eye for you two, isn't it? Oh, never mind. I won't hang around waiting for an apology. 480, please, Blanche. Thank I've you. got you Thank one you. in, Rita. Oh, thanks, Blanche. She said if I didn't come in and take a drink off her, she'd cancel her paper order. I don't know what's got into her. She's just making a point. Oh. Has anything happened to Mike, do you know? He reckons he's going to make this one. Oh, That's Mike. He's dead. No. I was with him and he just went. But can't they bring him back? Danny did everything he could, but no. Where was he? Outside the factory. Spent his life inside the place, then dies on its doorstep. Hello. Oh, Danny. Yeah, come in, come in. Hello, Blanche. I was just hearing about your loss. I'm very sorry. Well, uh, thank you. Uh, sit down, sit down. Right, well, let's have brandy, shall we? Or would you rather have a whiskey? Um, I'll have a whiskey, thanks. Did, uh, did he say anything at all before I got there? Um, well, he asked me where Deirdre was. Oh. And said he was going to take her away from me. Oh, he didn't. Oh, my. Now you've done it. Oh. So, um, so what now? I mean, I don't know what to do. Well, there isn't anything. Well, there must be something. I mean, well, you know, what do we do about the body? What do I do about the funeral? You know, I'm the eldest son, so there's them sort of things I have to sort out, but uh, don't ask me how, because I ain't got a clue. <laughs> Look, the first thing is, there's no hurry. So relax and have your drink. Yeah. That's if she ever gets round to pouring it. Yeah. <laughs> Thought already been admitted to hospital. Well, he had, but, um... Maybe he didn't know where he was. Anyway, um, he got out and he started wandering the streets. So, Thorpe went looking for him? And it was Ken. Oh, hi, love. Um, um, come here. Oh. I don't know what to say, you know? You don't have to say anything. The important thing is that you're here. And what did he do? idea that was. Yeah. She here yet? Who? Audrey. I can't wait to see her face when she sees him. Who? Audrey. But whose face? The face of the man she robbed from under me nose. Being selfish. I've got to pay my respects sometimes. Uh, where's Keith? Oh, he's parking. Archie! Oh! Well, lads, don't hold.
It's not that long since he lost his mum. Oh, it's terrible. So young. Danny shouldn't have risen to it. No, he shouldn't. It was shameful bullying. It's like I was saying this morning. All Adam can do is focus on the good times. That's all he can do. I mean, she, she can't seriously believe Richard Elman somehow cheated debt and now he's sending Norris, cards. stop it. It is not the time or the place, nor is it your secret to discuss. Hey, what's not your secret? Is this Audrey and Archie? I saw how he looked at her. Uh, Blanche, this is neither the time nor the place. Thinking, God be at mine end and at my departing. Amen. I think we flipping murdered him. May the love of God and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ bless and console you and all those who knew and loved Michael this day and forevermore. Amen. 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 Oh, have a scotch, Fred. Certainly. Audrey off moonlighting, is she? No, no, she just popped across to the salon. Oh, I thought she'd be having a business discussion with her old flame. Oh, Flynn? The Undertaker wheedled her way into his affections, doing shampoo and sets for the recently deceased. Did you not mention it? Strange. Norris, let me buy you a drink. Oh, I'll get the drinks. Norris, seats. Who didn't pay? Out. That was clear. Your boyfriend were wondering where you got to. Oh, hello, Archie. Archie? He sat over there. Ah, oh, yeah, there he is. Thanks, Blanche. Uh, I was going to introduce you, actually. Well, let's get our drinks and we can join him. Right. It's John of oh. oh. I might just go home and light a candle for all him. All right, well, wait for me. Uh, Fred, I'm taking Emily home now. You all right? Yes, thank you. And I thought you did a lovely speech. You did Mike proud. Bye for now. Come on. Is it the time and place yet, Norris? I could do with the earrings some at Juicy. Here you are. Oh. Hey, girl! <laughs> every, every day, oh, what you like? So, ghosts from the past, is it? Oh, Blanche. Archie's an old friend, just catching up. And I was going to introduce him to Keith. I didn't mean that. Do you know you're never happier than when you're causing trouble, are you? I wish I'd let Sarah spread your family business all around the place. Oh, I'm sure they'd prefer hearing what's going on with you. Oh, well, I wouldn't bank on that. People have very definite opinions about abortions. Two old friends meeting for a drink I don't think carries as much weight. <laughs> Taxidermy. <laughs> well, uh... We've somewhat in common then, haven't we, eh? Hardly. <laughs> I don't do humans. Keith, you don't do humour either by the sounds of it. <laughs> so, what did Audrey say about the cards? Hey, you go, love. Lovely too. Is that all you've got? Put them. I'm so... Audrey, I'm glad I caught you. What now? I was just checking with Archie. He says absolutely no question Hillman were dead. He embalmed him. So? I imagine Gail will find that reassuring. Oh, for heaven's sake, Blanche, please. Will you keep your gossip to yourself? Likewise. Uh, before you start, I'm not paying for them nails. I don't care. Come on, let's get a couple. Are people leaving already? Flaming Steve has only just knocked off. There better be champagne in there. I suppose a drink won't do you any harm. Oh, too right. Since you're not carrying a baby anymore. Oh, hi. Oh, we were just coming back in. I've had enough. Are you come in? No. Oh, make the most of being child free. Come and have a drink to Mike. Oh. Come on. Oh. I wasn't ready for another baby, Gran. It wouldn't have been fair on Amy. Oh, no, see, I mean, we do most of the looking after. Well, there you go. Please, Gran, don't tell Mum about this. She's got enough on her plate, promise me. Back already? Oh, I've had about as much as I can take. Proud of you, Adam. Not rising to him. I wouldn't give him a satisfaction, Granny. Danny wins arguments. He thinks he can win everything. Yeah, well, you've proved he can't. You can walk away. 
Well, I'm going to get them where it hurts. Uh, no, no, no. You want to learn from today, not rising to it. Then rise to them because I've got a better idea. I know what's most important to him, money. That's all he's interested in. And that's where I'm going to fight him. Money? He thinks it's all about to settle down. Well, it's not. I'm going to contest the will. Ken, it does no good sitting here miserable. I can't help the expression on my face. Well, don't look like that when I'm six feet under. Won't be long now. None of us live forever. Well, you can't expect him to be bouncing up and down the day after his father's funeral. He should be out and about. Mother, why don't you walk me to the bus stop? What? You heard. Come on. I'll see you later, Ken. Uh, uh, this is what old age is like. You're better off dead. It's me who's to be pitied, not Mike. Come on. See you later, Bye. Bye. Gran, I've been a terrible mother. I know. I haven't given Amy half the things a child needs. Like a father. Steve does his best. Without much help from you. Gran, you've got no idea how much I worry about her. You give the impression of only worrying about yourself. Is that why this new baby went to the wall? You didn't want to ruin your figure. Oh, and that's just great coming from the one person who was dead nuts on me getting rid of Amy as soon as she found out I was pregnant. Aren't you glad you took no notice? So what was he like then, this Richard Hillman? Oh, tight-fisted. Dead or alive, he wouldn't waste money on greetings cards. Oh. Thanks for the drinks. Get on with it. Amy? Right? Has been shifted from pillar to post since the day she was born, Gran. She needs stability. Well, it's my fault. I've had one boyfriend after another. She never gets used to anybody. She'd get used to a little brother or sister. Oh, no, Gran, that's where you're wrong. It would unsettle her. She'd be dead jealous. Amy needs to feel like she's the main person in my life, the top priority, that nobody else comes close. You don't stop loving one child when you have another. Yeah, well, she needs my undivided attention, Gran. But I've told her that from now on I'll spend as much time with her as possible. There's going to be no substitutes, there's going to be no last-minute strangers looking after her. Another baby would bring out the best in her. What do you think so? Because I can't take that chance. No, my loyalty has to lie with the baby that I've got. She comes first and last and she always will, Gran. Will she? Yes. So why do you expect me to keep all this to myself? Because, Gran, it was a difficult enough decision as it was. Gran, my mum, she wouldn't have understood it. Anyway, there's no point now because there's nothing anyone can do about it. And I just don't need this argument, all right? All right. Thank you. I hope I'm doing the right thing. Yes, you are. <sighs> Shouldn't we wait for Amy? No, Steve might keep her out. Well, they won't keep her out that long. No, oh, it doesn't matter. I told him to take her around to Charlie's. What if Charlie's out? Well, I don't know. I'll bring her around here. Actually, it'd be better if he did. Me and Charlie could really do with some time on our own. Well, don't expect us to look after her. We're taking your grand to the pictures. Oh, Adam will sit with her. Yeah, Adam might be going out. Well, I don't know. Somebody. Emily. Steve, Charlie, Adam, Emily. Who are you going to palm her off onto next? Well, it's hardly palming her off. Steve's a father, in case you'd forgotten. And she's the most important thing in your life, in case you've forgotten. I haven't, Gran. Maybe you did right to abort the other one. <clears throat> Gran. What did you say? Blanche? Have you had an abortion? Yes, she has. But it was for the sake of little Amy, so she didn't feel uh, unloved and neglected. Buy her a drink and she'll tell you all about it. That is not fair. You've aborted a child. It's no big deal. Get your coat, Blanche. I'm taking you for a drink. Good. I've heard everything that Tracy's got to say and I'm not impressed. You won't be either. <sighs> this afternoon. Oh, no, ho hopefully I'll feel better tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, OK, I will do. Bye-bye. What did you tell him? Bad case of wicked daughter. That's not fair. No. Tracy had a life inside her, our flesh and blood, and she killed it for the sake of gallivanting with her fancy man. If wicked's not the word, I don't know what is. You're not helping, Blanche. What help is there to be had? The child is dead. 
And every time I look into young Amy's eyes, I'll think of what her mother's done. All right, that's enough. Look, I've got to speak my mind on this, Deirdre. I'm too old to bite my lip. You make it sound so black and white. Do you really think Tracy did this so casually? Like some sort of lifestyle choice? I don't know. Well, I do. I know my daughter. This wasn't her idea, and going along with it must have broken her heart. It didn't look that way to me. Not before, nor after. We've not got a clue what we're going on. Your mother's got a point. I never noticed any change in Tracy. That's the worst part. She must have been suffering, and she had to hide it from me, her own mother. You didn't always tell me everything, dear Drake. Yes, I did. The important things. I should have been the one person in the world that she felt she could come to. Maybe if she had, that child would still be... So, you see, it's not Tracy who's to blame. It's me. Oh, Deirdre, that's absurd. No, it's not. Either Tracy was totally callous and she did this without batting an eye, or she was going through hell and felt she couldn't confide in me. Oh, but... And you've got to feel sorry for Gail. As if she'd not already been through the ringer, as it were. Well, at least she lived to tell the tale. Didn't have a life saves if wiped out, though, did she? You're making it sound like she got off easy. I mean, imagine finding out the bloke you're in love with is capable of... Ah, but when did she find out? What are you implying, woman? That's a big secret to hide in a small house. Steady on, Blanche. Yeah, no, 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 no. Maybe she's got something there. I mean, and I'm not saying that Gail were in cahoots with this, this Hillman fella, but maybe she saw what she wanted to see. They say love's blind. Oh, it must be. On both sides. Hey, I know what it's like to be deceived by fellas. They weren't serial killers, though. They were bad ones, all the same. The point is, I, I look back now and I wonder why I never saw it, but. I didn't, honestly, and neither did Gail. Oh, you took your time. My mommy's second here. Hey, what you like, this were murder, and it were right under her nose. Yeah, well, if she did have any inkling about Ilman, <laughs> a few nasty cars, the least she deserves. I'm just speaking as a find. I've always said that you reap what. Okay, Amy. Just seen Tracy in the street. What did she have to say for herself? <sighs> Didn't give her the chance. Oh, God. What have I bred? Now, don't start giving yourself a hard time again. She's not learned any of this from you. Well, she gets it from somewhere. Oh, thank you, Mother, for that vote of confidence. Poor well, Blanche shouldn't mean it. And that must be the tip of the iceberg. What other tricks does she get up to during the day that we don't know about? Yeah, well, whatever she's doing, it can't be blamed on Deirdre. You did the best you could. And if she wants to create havoc in other people's lives, well, it's nothing to do with us anymore. We wash her hands of her, you mean? I mean, she's a grown woman and she can take the consequences. That's all very well, but there's Amy to consider. That little girl watches her mother every day like a hawk. She'll turn out like her in the end if we're not careful, like Tracy watched her mother every day. I'm sorry, but I really don't need all this right now. And if this cockeyed theory of yours is right, Blanche, and Tracy is the mother from hell because of Deirdre, where did Deirdre get it from? If it's all inherited, tell me that. And answer came there none. In our day, it was illegal to uh, murder an unborn child, and quite right, too. Well, I think it's a bit more complicated than that, Norris. But it made people face the responsibilities, and that's what the young are lacking these days. Well, we don't want to go back to backstreet abortions, do we? Must have... There was something wrong with Tracy's baby, of course. But you know, I never thought of that. Well, I mean, you've only got to look at the parents, haven't you? Yeah, well, that would make sense, wouldn't it? I mean, if Tracy thought she got some terrible disease or someone passed it on, I mean, maybe she did the right thing by getting rid of it. And what disease would that be, Bray? Hey, hello, Blanche. Well, come on, don't be shy. Well, no, I, I was just saying that uh, Tracy must have had a good reason for having a termination, cos I know how fun she is of old kiddies. You want to go to one of these rehabilitation clinics with this addiction you have for spreading malicious gossip. Blanche, we were only speculating. You were speculating on the abortion. There wasn't one. What? Only in your lurid imagination. 
But I was told that... Well, whoever told you, tell them to get their facts right in future. Everyone's talking about it, Blanche. Where did they all hear it from? Where did you hear it from? Precisely. You expect me to deny it because of the shame it brings and the tittle-tattle. Well, you're wrong. I'd have approved her getting rid under the circumstances. But the fact is, it never happened. So, do I get an apology for the embarrassment you've caused this last week? But, yeah, Blanche, sorry if I spoke out of turn. Thank you. And thank your lucky stars. We're not suing you for slander. Two seconds and I'm all yours. Just rescuing this from busy hands. I hope he's done his homework when we get there. Well, you gave him enough details. Yeah, and I'm paying him enough too. Oh, oh, don't get me started on the legal profession. Uh, you're not going out? She pined. We've got a meeting with a solicitor. We? Oui. Yeah, I need the moral support. Yeah, and I need you here to look after Amy. I've got an appointment myself. What, the hairdressers? Manicurist? The bank, actually. Oh, sorry. Oh, you know what? You said that without moving your lips. Well, some other time, maybe. Oh, Dad! There's an old-fashioned contraption outside called a pram, which means you can take your child with you when you've got jobs to do. Ha-ha, oh, oh, very funny. This is important. No, this is important. Danny Baldwin's got to realise he cannot steal this lad's future and just stroll off into the sunset, at least not without a battle on his hands. Here, here. So, Gran, while they're out waging war... Don't look at me. It's time I was somewhere else. Well, you could wait for Deirdre. She won't be long. I wish us luck. Whatever. Bye, Amy. Bye. Scrubs up well, that lad. Mind, he wouldn't have bought that suit at CNA modes. Yeah, since they went out of business. When Adam were a lad. I were talking figuratively. That's my bank book. No, actually, it's Amy's. We've just had a cheque from generous Uncle Peter, 30 quid. It'll bounce all the way back to Portsmouth. Why did I agree, agree to this? Because you're a nice, supportive brother. Yeah, and she's given me a tenner. What? Sarah, I've never paid a model in my life. Until I build a reputation. You've got a reputation? As a hairdresser. Yeah, remember the corners, darling. Falaraki. What? You're meant to ask me when I'm going on my holidays. I'm concentrating. Yeah, that's what worries me. If I tell you something, will you keep it to yourself? You're not pregnant. Again. David Nosh! Eileen has got a theory that Mum is sending them cards. To herself? <laughs> Classic. The perp tries to throw people off the scent by pointing the finger at somebody else, usually the victim. Perp. Perpetrator. You don't believe it, do you? No. That well, crossed my mind. Your own mum? It only crossed my mind, that's all. Oh, come on. You have to speed up, darling. So much shine don't do you any favours. <sighs> Try telling that to Blanche. Come on, chop, chop. Ready now, Blanche. There we go. Oh, I would want some model at Vidal Sassoon, you know. Four hours in the chair, and all I got were funny looks and a wonky fringe. Ah. I bet your Gail has had a few do's in her time. Uh, <coughs> uh, I'm sorry I told you. Yeah, me and all. It's only starting to sink in. Anniversaries, birthdays. She had to get the dates from somewhere, didn't she? And you think that's me? I did not give her any dates, and Eileen didn't send the cards. Well, when did you and Jason get together? Do you mind? This is your mother's private business. You don't want to be discussing things in front of clients. Cram. No argument, Sarah. Right? Both of you. So let me get this right. Jason only went out with me as a smokescreen so that the Grimshaws could wage a war against the Platts. Grow up. Well, it's obvious where your loyalties lie. Do you think that I would back Eileen over my own mother? You are talking the biggest amount of... Well, explain yourself then, Sarah. Eileen spreading rumours. You're trying to keep them a secret. Who are you trying to protect? Mum, Eileen, or yourself? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Not long to go now. Oh, do you know, I'll be glad when today's over, Blanche. Oh, you've not been sleeping, I suppose. Still, when you've got troubles, a busy diary must be a boon. £2.50 change, Blanche. Uh, do you want to book your next appointment? <laughs> Bye. Gran, will you check this? All right, but... Oh, 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 someone got a date? Is someone cracking funnies? You look very fetching, Blanche. Thank you. To my mind, it were £12.50 well spent. Oh. 
evil's up. No, love, it's me, rest assured. I'll say one thing for Audrey. She's a pro. She might have the worries of the world on her shoulders, but it's never reflected in your set. Afternoon. 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 And have that family got worries? Well, you know. Aye, well, you're asking the wrong bloke there, Blanche. Haven't you seen her? Audrey. Gail. If I were her, I'd probably confine myself to barracks. Happen I'll give her a knock, see if she needs out. I've got the kettle on. And on my chinny chin chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. So he huffed and he puffed. Deirdre. And he blew the house in. Uh, Deirdre. Mm -hmm. I've been uh, mulling something over. Oh, what's that? Well, you know, I told you about Archie. Now he's back. Well, yes, I know. I saw him myself at the funeral, remember? Oh, so you did. So, uh, what about him? Well, do you think he's come back for me? Well, let's hope so, shall we? Um, how do you mean? Well, we were close. Oh. Haven't he's come back? Because he still has feelings. Well, anything's possible. I mean, suppose he did have feelings. How would, how would you feel about that? Well, that's what I've been thinking about. I want to be honest, Deirdre. Uh, seeing you again, well, it, it just stirred something up. But... I need some air. Uh... Has he... Has he actually said anything that made you think that he might want to pick up the pieces? You know men, Deirdre. More than anyone, you know men. They're never comfortable talking about their feelings. But I've seen the regret in his eye when he's looked at me. Yeah. Fancy seeing you here. Blanche, come and join us. We were we were just talking about Dolly the sheep. Oh, from the wool stall on the market. Oh no, no. cloning. Yeah, Archie reckons we'll be able to make clones of ourselves within fifty years. Can't say as I like the idea of that. I mean, I wouldn't like to go to my grave thinking there was still something of me out and about there. <laughs> Can we get you a drink? Well, that's most kind of you. If you're sure. I wouldn't say no to a vodka and tonic. When has she vodka. ever said no? Anyone else need topping up? No, thank you. Oh, it is nice to see him back. Yes. Do you know, he certainly put a smile on my face. How about you, Blanche? Are you glad to see him back? What difference to me would it make whether he's back or not? Am I a woman? Uh, correct. Am I a singer? That's right. Am I dead? Uh, no. Oh. Now, I am not human, but I am famous. That's yes. right. Yeah. And I'm in films? Yes. Am I lassie? No. no. Oh, what a shame. <laughs> my turn. Right. Have I got my own chat show on television? <laughs> uh, no, love. No, you have not got your own chat. <laughs> so I'm not Michael Parkinson. <laughs> 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 right, before you start, I did not forget your birthday, OK? How could I? You've been leaving notes around the flat for weeks. And yet I could have bought you a pair of earrings, but I don't... Well, I'm a woman, I'm no longer alive, and I'm not an actress. Or a singer. Oh, no, don't help her. Well, I want another drink and she's stacking all night. <laughs> well, I've never been any good with games. I give up. Oh, are you sure? Oh, yes. Agatha Christie. Well, I'd never have got that. Right. <laughs> well, uh, shall we play another game? Can we get some drinks in? Yes, and it's my turn to pay. I'll go to the bar. I'll Thank give you a hand. Well, I'll have to think what a right for you, Archie. You know this game very well. Well, I've played it too often. Me and the lads sat in a hearse waiting for funerals to end. <laughs> what are you smiling at? Just a thought. I've been trying to have a quiet word with you all night. Oh, what about? Uh, well, it's about us. Well, what about us? Well, now you're back on the scene again. 
I should never have let you go. I realize now that it was my jealousy that drove you away from me. But I want you to know I've changed. But, but my feelings for you haven't. Oh, I, I see. Blanche. Yes, Blanche. If there's one thing I learned all those years of the taking, it was not to look back, not to regret what happened. Now, the time we spent together was magical. No, it really was. And you'll always be a special lady in my eyes, but, well, I, I think it would be wrong to revisit those feelings. Oh. Well, God, no, what we've got now, which I hope we've got for a long, long time, is a, a special friendship. Oh, uh, well, yes, uh, of course. My little dog now, uh, she takes up a lot of my time. Blanche? Yes, Archie. You're a wonderful woman. You, know, you, you always make me smile. And my life's a lot better having you in here. Hey! This morning, the poor woman looked like a frightened animal. Well, Sarah says she's in a bit of a bad way. Uh, well, I've never been a hunter myself, too much of a sensitive type, but I imagine that's what an antelope looks like when it's staring down the barrel of a gun. Hey, hello, hello. love. Um, lovely day. It is, it is. Just um, come to pay my papers. Right, here we go. A quarter of dolly mixtures, Ta. Oh, no. And don't give me none of them jellies to play Abbott with my cavities. Surprise, you've still got a tooth in your head. Eating them things. Well, that's uh, £16.20, love. Soon mounts up, don't it? It does, yeah. Especially when you've got Davy's magazine. <laughs> that's 55 pence, please. Uh, so, are you feeling better? I'm absolutely fine, thank you. No one blames you, you know. If I'd have had to put up with half of what you've been through, I'd be barking mad myself. <laughs> I'm trying to be nice. I am. I'm being nice. Oh, forget it. You're about as subtle as the blitz you are. No, no, well, while I can see, she, she put a point across with all the finesse of a hippopotamus, I, I, I do echo her sentiments. In English? Well, when life deals you such a blow, I mean, you can be driven to desperate measures. It happened it were nothing but a cry for help. You can spill your guts to us, Gail. We're listening. You honestly think I'm doing this to myself? You think I torture my family like this? I'm sure he did You lot want to look at yourselves. Your constant tittle-tattle's enough to drive anybody round the bend. Oh, it's not malicious, love. We feel for you. You have a lot of friends round here who care about you. I just wanted a normal day. That's all. Is that too much to ask for? Gail. Apparently, you know, yes, very artistically dull. Mm. Shall we go? Why not? <laughs> Artistic, my eye. Fellas who want to be girls with bosoms sticking out to beat the band and their tackle tucked where the sun doesn't shine. Well, I don't know. I think it's, you know, all the dancing and singing and carrying on. It must be so glamorous. Trust him to want to go looking at pervos sexuals. Sex mad he is. Maybe that's what comes with working with death on a daily basis. I stare death in the face every time I look in a mirror. Doesn't get my motor running. I'll just... <laughs>